Welcome back to Tarquin's Abs, that's ABS for Army Build Series. Today we have a Jade Army for Grand Cathay. Pretty much this is just going to be a mid-game army that I like to field quite a few of in Cathay campaigns. Now, you can definitely build similar to this in a multiplayer battle setting, but today I thought, you know, I'd be good to show this in a campaign setting as it's a pretty standard, stock standard army that I basically just print. Uh, in the mid-game for Cathay, because Cathay can get pretty big pretty quick. Now, it's really, I would say, cheap, because it's all Jade Warriors, as you can see. There's a couple cannons in the back. Now, you can kind of adjust this however you want. Sometimes, instead of cannons, you want, like, maybe you've got Hellstorm rocket batteries. Obviously, that's not what they're called. Fire rain rocket batteries, I guess. But there's a lot of different things you can do. For now, let's quickly set up all of our infantry. Warriors! You know, we're going to shift all this Ready back here by a bit. Just about like so. I want to spread out my archers so that I'm giving the whoops, the harmony bonus to everyone. Ever so slightly. We've got two cavalry. When it's playing if you're playing in like a multiplayer sense, I would recommend probably having three. You probably still get away with two. But the idea still is very ooh, the same. I don't like that. That's fine. We should be fine regardless. <clears throat> Oops. Put this guy over here. So pretty much the layout of this army is just a massive amount of Jade Warriors. I love these units. I think they look so thematic. So cool. They are so dope. You can buff them pretty well in campaign, as you can see. 43 melee attack, 53 melee defense. Nothing to scoff at. Um, even a little bit more with, I guess, slightly different numbers with the Jade Warriors. But they get 101 armor if they're standing in place. Obviously, we've got buffs from Zhao Ming's faction and things of that nature. But decent damage. The thing that really makes this work, though, is the fact that you have ranged variants, and then the one non-Jade warrior unit in the army is some artillery. So I would recommend getting Grand Cannons or Crane Gunners or the Fire Rain Rocket. You could probably do Balloons if you wanted to, but if you took Balloons, you're going to want some Longma, and at that point, you're ruining the theme of the army. It's no longer a Jade warrior stack, per se. Hmm, I do not like... Oh, it's because we're waiting for reinforce reinforcements. Let's speed this up. Casters, it really doesn't matter. I love uh, the Lore of Yang, but Lore of Yin is also really good. Lore of Yin, you'll have a summon that can plug up um, holes. Obviously, you can also get a summon. This is an army ability for having harmony bonus in campaign, but clearly we're not in harmony at the moment. Oh, looks like we're getting some pot shots off. Is that just a feral manticore? All right, we'll let him shoot at that. That's fine. <clears throat> but I've got a Yang caster. Wallow into fire is pretty darn good. Um, I mean, honestly, it's just really good for clearing out chaff. So the army we're against has a lot of marauders. So I think this is actually really ideal. Lord of Yin is more of the armor piercing department, but it's going to work well regardless. All right, let's slow things down a little bit here because we do need to get a bit picky on what our artillery shoots at. So pretty much the Jade Lancers are here to just guard our back line. There's a lot of Chaos Spawn, which we're going to want to get rid of. We have Armor Trolls, definitely want to get rid of that as well. Looks like we did a hefty chunk of damage to the... Lord over here, which is pretty nice. Do they have a caster? Yeah, they've got two casters. Nothing too threatening. Spirit Leech and uh, Mystifying Miasma does not bother me one bit. Oh, there's the Mystifying Miasma, I guess. Feral Manticore is rampaging, but sitting in the air. Okay, there he goes. <laughs> Odd. But this is a part of the reason we have cavalry. Let's get these guys coming over here. Where's he come down? All right, perfect. This will get the Manticore off the field. I'm gonna stop these orders and let him fire back at will. Don't want him to get too congested. Is that a... No, okay, that's just a chariot. For a moment I thought it was a... Oh, what are they called? 
the DLC unit, the big war shrine. There we go. Good golly. Anyway, so I do apologize if obviously my commentary is going to be quite lackluster. I still am not used to commentating while fighting battles. Let's get a nice. I think we want to grab like this. Nice wall of wind and fire there. So yeah, I'm not going to have the best commentary ever because I am very much so not used to playing and type or talking at the same time. But hopefully with time we will get better at that specific um, task. So pretty good damage coming down. I don't know if the overcast is actually worth it. Is it? Cool down. Okay, yeah, it just ups the duration, I guess. Probably still just as slow no matter what. Which is totally fine. Nice engagements back here. We're doing pretty well for Fire ourselves. The front line is holding very nicely. And this is about an army and a half. It's a lot of chaff. It's really nothing too impressive. So it's not like I'm getting too many brag rights out of this victory. But the idea is mainly just to showcase this kind of an army build and why it can really win you a lot in the early game. Um, or the mid game, obviously, because you have to get some tier three buildings. All of these units are tier three, so it's really not expensive infrastructure wise. It is a fair bit of buildings, but I could have gotten more expensive artillery. I just went with the tier three because I wanted a nice tier three basic army. It has great auto resolve weight. Um, Jade Lancers do, or Jade Warriors do amazing with that. Just the high amount of armor, really good melee defense stats on a lot of these units. Wow, Jade Lance is 40. That is crazy, is the amount of buffs they're getting. Anything for Cathay. Everything's pretty much riding off here, so a pretty short one. I don't know if I'll have to find, like, more difficult campaign battles to showcase these kind of armies. This one I felt was fine in doing what I did here because it was, at least in my mind, it was more of, like, here's showing off a mid-game army that can not quite doomstack, but very effectively clear out enemy armies and just fight super duper efficiently these crossbows are not armor piercing but like the armor piercing value they have is really high so they're gonna do a lot of damage to even highly armored targets so the armor piercing on this army is actually pretty darn stellar even if it does not quite look that way everything's gonna shatter it's gonna be nice it, this will be a pretty quick battle but again we are just showcasing a strategy that i do think a lot of us uh, could enjoy using. All right, looks like we just got ourselves some chaos spawn to finish up. Let's see if I can shoot down the alley here. Is that the bad angle? Okay, I'm just gonna hurt my own units. I don't wanna do that. Let's speed it along. But yeah, it's very simple in practice. You just have a nice big wall, bunch of archers in the back, I take about nine infantry, is what I have here, I believe. Yeah, four and five, so. And I, I like to have five of the halberds. They are armor-piercing and anti-large. They fill that role a little bit better. If you want, you can move, you can stagger your units a little bit. You can put those jade warriors higher up because they're gonna be uh, shielded. They're gonna take any kind of like crossbow fire. And depending on the faction you have this army facing, it might be better to go with something like crane, gu crane gunners over cannons obviously you can adjust a lot of this as you want and it's easy again to also build this army so not only is it pretty easy to recruit all of these units but a lot of these are just replaceable so for example you can start out even lower tier all these halberds would just be peasant spears and these guys back here would be peasant archers and then you'd slowly upgrade it you got some peasant cavalry even so you can really build this army you can start at super low level and then build it to this mid game strong strength setup here and it'll it'll beat outnumbered uh, opponents. It'll be really really good. Actually, I'm not sure. I hardly outnumbered them. Like they had a pretty amount, pretty decent amount of like monsters infantry. But obviously that was a big marauder stack. Nothing too threatening. So let me know what you think about this video, since it is probably a bit shorter, a little bit more laid back. Obviously, I'm not talking nearly as as well as I do in a pre-recorded one. But let me know if you think. You kind of like the format, you like me showcasing armies that aren't necessarily like the doom stack, the, the end of days armies. This is more just a cost efficient army that you can print out of your empire and have a lot of them. So let me know if you like that, if you think I need to find um, more dangerous opponents to go up against. You know, give me your thoughts, let me know what you think. Um, again, as always, 
Feel free to adjust this army to fit your playstyle or matchup. And thanks again for watching. I will talk to you later.